Hey guys, welcome to the another topic of discussion today that is Surviving Success Government Guidelines 2021. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe my channel and put the like button so that it will motivate me for doing more videos for you guys. So today we will be discussing another following headings of this topic. And our first part is going to be focusing more on the screening of the patient with sepsis and the initial resuscitation part in sepsis management. So for understanding of that, first we will be, I will be creating a case scenario like events. Okay, consider that 48 year female patients. Okay who is actually came with complaints of burning maturation and fever for past three days okay and this patient has come now to the emergency department and when the patient come to the emergency department you are actually seeing the vitus and vitus heart rate was 138 per minute and bp was around 70 by 40 millimeters of mercury so when this patients come to this uh, emergency setting you know and peripheries or cold and calm cold and calm okay periphery is cold clammy skin is seen okay so you have a source of infection uta and the patient having hypotension and periphery cold suggestive of actually sepsis patient may be in shock sepsis may be in shock okay so when this kind of patient come to is First initial resuscitation measure what you will be seeing the basal vitals and initial resuscitation you will secure a line and then this patient first sepsis 2021 guidance what says is sepsis and septic shock both of them are actually considered as a medical emergencies so you have to intervene as much as possible and resuscitation should be started as fast as possible when the patient reaches the settings okay and initial fluid should be given at a rate of 30 ml per kg body weight and within six hours within three hours within within first three hours this fluid should go to the patient okay these are actually weak recommendation and uh, this not having a more it's having a moderate quality of evidence and it is a weak recommendation only and number three this patient's what else we can do you have given fluid and you are seeing whether bp is improving so for improving bp uh, you can monitor the dynamic parameters for bp dynamic over static parameters and clinical examination so because if you are giving fluid you will be assessing the clinical examination whether there is a improvement in decrease in the heart rate and improvement in bp and improvement in the mental status that everything but clinical parameters compared to the clinical parameters and static parameters if a dynamic parameters is the one which can give a better uh, uh, how your fluid resuscitation is going on what are the parameters you know actually you see a passive leg raising plr straight raising fluid boluses you can give an assess and next is if a stroke volume variation stroke volume per se also we can assess if echocardiography again we can assess the output how, how is the cardiac output or anything so if the patient is intubated and patient is having arterial line we can assess with ppv pulse pressure variability these are the dynamic parameters can be used as a, one of the tool for assessing the improvement in bp okay next thing is you have actually um, this patient you are given fluid and you are assessing the bp and how much your target bp you have to maintain is map target should be maintained at a range of 65 or higher map values can be encouraged okay lower than should normally higher map is 65 and more than the map values have to be maintained in this patients okay so now you have given sepsis you are suspecting the sepsis you are given the fluid and you are observing with the parameters and it is improving and map target achieved to 65 millimeters of mercury so next thing is what will happen is you have source of infection you have left with source of infection so you have to handle the source of infection how will you handle with antibiotics so for that antibiotics there are actually numerous guidelines updated according from the last actually what uh, i forgot to mention uh, how will you assess the fluid resuscitation whether it's adequate or not you can monitor the decreasing trend of serum lactate level as a fluid responsiveness fluid responsiveness you can observe with the decreasing trend of lactate level okay 
if the level is more than uh, it was three before i have the fluid resuscitation it is come down two means it is responding well to the fluid and it is responding in the fluid resuscitation depending upon which we can titrate the fluids okay so at the antibiotics if the patient first you have to know sepsis whether it is sepsis is probable diagnosis or possible diagnosis sepsis is possible sepsis is possible and sepsis is confirmed or pro sepsis is confirmed okay sepsis confirmed or probable is possible is is there means it is there or may not be there okay next you will be observing whether the patient is in shock or shock is present or shock is absent patient is not in shock septic shock not which hypotension was not there like that if the patient is having sepsis and shock is present then you have to administer the antibiotic within one hour you have to give empirical antibiotic you have to start if the patient is in sepsis is possible and possible and the patient is not having shock features that means sepsis may or may not be there and shock is also not there in that stage what you can do is you can wait um, you have to rule out infectious which is non-infectious causes so other causes of uh, sepsis uh, acute illnesses that mimic sepsis have to be ruled out and rapid history physical examination and uh, gram strain culture have to be sent and in this patient if sepsis if infection you are suspecting within three hours you have to start the antibiotics okay broad spectrum have to be started within three hours if the patient sepsis is confirmed or probable diagnosis sepsis is there then you have to there is no option left you have to start with shock is present also you have to start within one hour if sepsis is confirmed and probable and patient is in, not in shock also sepsis is confirmed and probable diagnosis you have to go with one hour within one hour you have to start the antibiotics the only only time limit left is that if sepsis is possible may or may not be there and patient is not in shock you can wait uh, until three until three hours from the admission time to the three hours to rule out whether infectious causes or non-infectious causes in this patient is uh, is anything is there you can rule out okay after that you can but at the end of three hours the possible diagnosis also infection is met then you have to start the antibiotics next thing is actually what they told if the uh, ic or if the patient is critically sepsis and uh, shock then patient should be shifted to icu within six hours of admission from the time of admission to the six hours the patient had to be shifted to the icu for further management and for starting antibiotics for starting antibiotics procalcitonin uh, plus uh, clinical examination before it was used at procalcitonin and a clinical examination as a tool for starting antibiotics but now they are told that procalcitonin uh, they recommend against the use of procalcitonin they use only guidance as a clinical examination whether to start antibiotics or not okay procalcitonin is against now it is not recommended to for the guidance of antibiotic starting but whereas for de-escalating antibiotics it have the rule for de-escalating antibiotics serial procalcitonin value with clinical examination have been correlated and it is useful for de-escalation of the antibiotics okay so these things we are seeing with antibiotics so now next antibiotics uh, what now next antibiotics what you are going to see is uh, suppose if the patient uh, you are started at broad spectrum and patient is at high risk for you have to look for risk for mrsa that is methicillin resistant staphylococcus whether patient is high risk or low risk if the patient is in high risk for mrsa then you have to start antibiotic with mrsa coverage okay antibiotic with mrsa coverage suppose if the patient is in low risk then empirical antibiotic without mrsa coverage have to be started without mrsa coverage okay and if the patient you, you have seen if the patient is having multi drug resistant uh, organism if you are md or multi drug resistant organism then you have to uh, if you are suspecting then you have to start with 2 gram negative antibiotic coverage 2 gram negative antibiotic coverage should be started if it is high risk patient with md or multi drug resistant organism if it is low risk then you can start with uh, 1 gram negative 
antibiotic coverage okay and every time actually if you find uh, the ultimate aim initial aim is source control is the main aim if you are able to control the source and if you are able to find out the organism which is there then you were from two gram negative you have started the patient high risk you have started the patient and you have sent the culture you have find out only one gram negative bacilli then you have to st consider de-escalation of another one gram only one gram negative coverage had to be carried out consider de-escalation of an one gram negative antibiotic okay and what other thing they have told is you have to give the antibiotics as a continuous infusion dosage not with continuous infusion dosage not over intermittent intermittent is before it was given intermittent but it should be given now as a continuous dosage how continuous dosage depending upon your pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic profile of the drug your administration and timing of the drug have to be planned accordingly and another thing is you have to consider de-escalation of antibiotics daily suppose okay elevation of antibiotics daily suppose if they have started the antibiotic before nowadays we have to give ceftriaxone means 7 to 10 days 7 to 10 days or peptides means 10 days it is not like a fixed fixed days had not been scheduled de-escalation of antibiotics should be considered daily if the patient is improved clinically improved our counts are decreasing then the patient is well tolerating then de-escalation should be considered daily okay and i already mentioned procalcitonin can be used as a procalcitonin with clinical examination can be used as a marker for de-escalation of antibiotics okay these are actually some of the more important things regarding your resuscitation point of view and your uh, uh, how uh, antibiotic strategy therapy depending upon this you are actually finding out and then next another thing is actually you have left with this your yearly screening screening part actually what they mentioned strong recommendation they came with performance improving improvement program improvement performance improvement program for sepsis have to be carried out in all hospitals in hospitals and health centers so that patient can be easily identified at the earliest stage for patient who is in acutely ill suspected high risk sepsis patient performance improvement program and fluid resuscitation antibiotics should be started as fast as possible okay now it, this was there in 2016 consensus also but now these have to be considered for the patient who is having standard operation conditions suppose standard operation procedures if they plan in this patient if the patient having fever or having high uh, hypotension everything then this sepsis screening protocol have to be carried out uh, in that yearly antibiotic starting everything have to be carried out in that patients also next thing is actually whenever patient come and in the emergency department come in ICU admission or something Q so far is out of they recommend against Q so far and consider news or what else news or SIRS for scoring for uh, sepsis uh, on ICU admissions Q so far is out of practice now and consider measuring serum lactate so serum lactate is also one of the prognosticate factor which will give you the mortality how the patient is proceeding mortality at the initial stage itself okay so these are the three screening parameters they have told performance implement program had to be implemented and even it includes the standard operation procedures also these have very low quality of evidence but it's also included q sofa is coming out muse news and uh, even sirs score have taken over the function uh, it can be considered any one of the parameter can be one of the scoring system can be used as a marker for ic admission and consider serum lactate measurement serially to give uh, to get an idea of uh, how the prognostication how the patient is going and for initial resuscitation part 
when it's a medical emergency 30 ml per kg fluid should be started within 3 hours and dynamic parameters should be considered over static parameters and clinical thing map target 65 or more and fluid responsiveness you can see with decrease in trend of lactate and antibiotics depending upon sepsis and shock status we have to start most probably within one hour if shock is not there sepsis is probable then within three hours you have to start okay next de-escalation depending upon uh, procalcium no role in starting antibiotics whereas de-escalation of antibiotics it have the role together with clinical examination and you have seen the high risk, high risk what are the things patient with mrsa and mdr organisms source control and another thing is if the patient is having high risk for fungal infections also you can start antifungal and if the patient having low risk then antifungal should not be started okay high risk if they uh, following some of the criteria then you have to start with antifungal there is no recommendation for antiviral per se actually for this uh, in sepsis control okay so and then antibiotic depending upon how much how, how we are giving okay these are the some of the most future common features which is seen in resist screening patients and initial resuscitation let's see the hemodynamic monitoring and ventilation part in other videos if you like my videos please put the thumbs up button and subscribe my channel so that i can do more videos for you guys thank you guys